Young children strip searched and emotionally scarred all by state investigators. Five investigates Kathy Curran reports it all began with a small bruise on a foster child and it ended with a flawed investigation that has state officials expressing regret. Go ahead, you're doing it. Our two year old was sleeping upstairs. They made us go upstairs with a flashlight, check him for bruises. He takes off. Four young children. A newborn baby had to be stripped down and, and checked him as well. Strip searched, questioned, and traumatized by state investigators. The next day, my four year old asked my wife, is DCF going to take us away forever? John and Meg D'Amelia, who have four biological children, say their desire to foster kids who needed help ended in disgust for the Department of Children and Families. Allegations of abuse and neglect, known as 51A reports, involving their own children and a three-year-old foster child they were caring for, were filed after a social worker noticed what appeared to be small bruises on the foster child. Records show the top toddler had a history of tantrums and would drop herself on the floor. When I was doing her hair, I said, oh, you have a little mark on your ear. How'd you get that? And nothing. She didn't. I was like, does it hurt? Nothing. I touched it. Nothing. It was tiny. It could have been a bug bite. It could have been a bruise. She's three. This 51A alleged neglect of the Demelia's four children. It was screened in as an emergency, triggering an immediate investigation. Even though department policy defines an emergency as a situation where there's an immediate risk of death, serious injury, or sexual abuse, none of which were present in this case. Five investigates also found several discrepancies in the department's reports that sparked the emergency response. Despite the abuse being only an allegation and the fact that the marks were noticed as the child was being moved to another foster home that day, a supervisor wrote that abuse was found and as a result that the foster child was immediately removed. The initial report also only includes information from a nurse practitioner who said the injury may have been inflicted. It didn't mention that a doctor also examined the little girl at the time and said it was possible the bruise was caused inadvertently by other children. The Demelias have no criminal history and have fostered many children over the years. In the end, all of the allegations in this case were unsupported. They pretty much strip search your kids mm -hmm. to look for signs of abuse. A as a dad, what was going through your mind? Fear that they were about to take them. You're opening your home to help these other children and now they're threatening to take away your own. That's why the family has decided to close their licensed foster home. This at a time when there aren't enough foster homes for the number of children in the system. Since 2015, DCF has closed 609 foster homes. Another 841 have been voluntarily closed by licensed foster families. Erin Bradley is the executive director of the Children's League of Massachusetts. Can the department afford to have families like this close their home? I don't think the Commonwealth can afford to have one foster home close on their own. The department now regrets the way the Demelia's case was handled. A spokesperson telling us every day DCF has to make critical time sensitive decisions based on the information presented to ensure child safety. And we can't help these children anymore. My children have to come first and I can't expose them to this again. Investigators also made the Demelias take their kids to the hospital to be checked, even though they didn't find any signs of abuse or neglect. The state ended up reimbursing them for the $600 bill. We've also learned there's an internal investigation into how this case was handled. Kathy Curran, 5 Investigate.